Hello everyone and welcome to Resilience, Keep Calm and Carry On. Um, this is with Rachel Jeffries and George Heritage coming to you as part of the Cambridge Global Schools Festival. My name is Jenny Mutley Collins and I'll be hosting today's session. So during the webinar, you'll be able to see Rachel and George and see their slides. You won't need a microphone. If you want to ask them a question, please use the question and answer box. Um, the presenters will be able to answer any questions that you have at the end of the webinar, which will be in approximately 30 minutes. Um, for general chat and feedback during the webinar, please use the chat box, but as a polite request, please don't paste your own links into the chat. Um, we don't actually share webinar slides, but the recording of today's webinar will be available by next week on YouTube and you'll receive a link to download your certificate at the end of the webinar. We'll also send it to you by email. Okay, so I'm really pleased to welcome Rachel and George as our presenters for this session. Um, George Heritage is Assessment Services Manager for Spain and Portugal for Cambridge Assessment English, providing and supporting assessment solutions in the region. And Rachel Jeffries started her teaching career over 10 years ago as a secondary teacher of drama. She has experience in teaching a wide range of ages and nationalities in various countries. Um, she holds the PGDE and Delta. Rachel is pedagogical lead at Cambridge University Press, Iberia. So for now, over to Rachel and George. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Good morning, George. How are you? I'm right. Thank you, Rachel. How are you? I'm Sorry, very well. Sir. Thank you. Thank I'm you going to coffee in 45 seconds. Excellent. Was quite very good. <laughs> good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to everybody joining us. I think we've got uh, 600, um, 700 people now live in the session with us here, George, which is fantastic. Excellent. I am going to share my screen. Bear with me one second while I get my PowerPoint up and running. If you can let me know when you can see my screen. You can see the screen, right, George? Screen. Yep, I can see it. Okay, let's get going then. So, George, what are we talking about today? Um, we're talking about resilience um, in our learners, in we ourselves. Are, exactly, we are indeed keeping calm and carrying on. I was struggling to keep calm, I must say, with the little countdown at the top of the screen then. Well, me too, but I did that, manage to make a was, cup of coffee. Just. Well, the coffee will help, <laughs> I'm sure it yeah. will. Okay, let's have a look at our agenda then for this morning. George, uh, we're based in, uh, both based in Madrid, so that's why we are referring, although technically now I do believe that we've just entered the afternoon. Um, so we'll start by thinking about all of the situations um, for all of you, wherever you are in the world, what your life is like and the, the current teaching situation you are in at the moment. Then, George, we'll move on to... Um, then we'll have a think about what what we mean by resilience, what it is, what it isn't. Um, we'll look at different ways we can try and build resilience in ourselves and amongst our learners. Then, Rachel? Uh, moving on to quite possibly the theme of 2020, embracing change. Um, and finally, we'll think about, uh, in terms of that change, uh, a few digital tools that may support you and be of use um, for your classes and your learners at the moment. So we'll let's be kick thinking off. more. We'll be thinking more about how to choose our tools. That's true. Thank you, George. Yeah, that's that all right. True. We'll look at some resources. It's not going to be an, a tireless, a tiring list of uh, resources, but things we've got to bear in mind because I think we've all been flooded by hundreds of new resources and tools over the last. Indeed. How long has it been? Eight months. Eight yeah. months. Something Very like true. That. Very and, true. And uh, sometimes, you know, I think we have to bear things in mind when choosing them. But let's start. What is your life like at the moment? What do we mean by that, Rachel? What a question, right? So <laughs> yeah, we're talking about uh, your teaching life, of course. Um, so whether you are back teaching face to face, whether you're still teaching online, or perhaps you've got a bit of both happening and you've got a blended um, classroom situation happening. George, are you able to see the chat box? Because I am, I am. Um, so brilliant, brilliant, hectic life on Zoom, very busy, teaching face to face, totally online. Uh, so we've got a mixture, we've got quite a big mixture online, fully online, strange, hybrid. 
Um, so we usually find this, George, don't we, that we have a, a complete mix. Even when we are delivering yeah. sessions just here in Spain, we, we get teachers telling us that yeah. they have a big uh, variety of classroom situations happening. So we imagine that, of course, for a global audience, that would certainly also be the case. So this is taken from an article, I think this was published in April, something like that, way back when, um, you know, all of you, all of us, we were reinventing ourselves um, to teach online. Um, and a selection of different quotes here. We had teachers saying they don't feel at ease when talking to the camera, um, parents getting anxious, but interesting to see how they're, they're getting close to their children's education now. Should we move on to the next one, Rachel? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think I think really what we can just summarise in this um, slide in particular was that um, change, that big. Um, yeah. We I mean we all had to adapt. Um, even you know for for George and I, um, adapting to a completely different way of working. And very quickly we were in contact with lots of teachers, um, and really kind of on the ground trying to support teachers. Um, and it was, I think, you know, uh, a testament to how truly resilient teachers uh, can be and, and are, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're all in a very different position now. But I mean, I started giving webinars in March and March and April. There was quite a bit of ooh, panic. What are we doing? Uh, but I think a lot of you are face to face now. A lot of you are still online. I think we've... Um, all learn what does work well, what doesn't work well. And I hope that once this is over, um, a lot of what we've learned, we will carry forward. So I think we have discovered a lot of, all of the online resources we've been using were, were available beforehand. Uh, perhaps we weren't really using very many of them very much, but a lot of them have um, made a lot of things easier. So I hope that a lot of uh, what we've learned, we will take forwards. Definitely. And I think that from what we can see on this slide as well, George, what you just said um, resonates here. Perhaps we were doing things that didn't really make sense online in the beginning. And yeah. obviously we've, we've really learned from that now and we are a lot more, um, I suppose, picky and choosy with what we decide to use online. We make sure that the resources and the tools that we're using, we're using them for uh, a purpose and they really are valuable for our classes rather than just another tool to use. Yeah. Um, I think get, getting used to the camera, I think, is something that we've all had to get used to a little bit as well, George. Yeah. You agree? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and I think we're I think a lot of us have a clear idea of how lessons best work online or in a mixture. I think you need to take a lot more. Well, you need to take more time to plan things. Things do take longer online. Um, so I think things need to be very carefully staged. Um, a lot more perhaps than in class you can't sort of be quite as spontaneous as you can in a face-to-face -face class um, shall, we, shall we move on to think about resilience yeah, now yeah, George? let's think about how we have been dealing with it so what is resilience so know that you can box. see the chat box George so you can any, pick up on any, any ideas, ideas in the chat box what is resilience enduring Shaheen has said patience stamina the capacity to endure survival, overcoming problems, being flexible, true. persistence, sufferance. Nice, Claudia. Amazing. <laughs> um, just as you're looking at that, George, I'm going to bring up a, a few more questions that people can, can answer okay. as well in the chat box. So uh, what does it look like in our learners? Any ideas for, for this? How can we try to build a resilient attitude? Okay. And finally, for ourselves, do we practice? Do we what practice we what we preach? Yeah, which I think is, I think we're, a lot of us are getting better at that now, but things were pretty stressful, especially in the summer and potentially when we came back, back to class in September or whenever, depending on where you are. We live and learn, we ask for help, we reflect, stressful. Reflect. Lots of motivation Fantastic. and understanding, looking for the good side of things adjusting aspects of our lives yeah lots of great ideas wonderful um here is a dictionary definition from the cambridge advanced learners dictionary it's not the only dictionary there are other dictionaries uh, but <laughs> the definition that we found here was the ability to be happy successful etc again 
after something difficult or bad has happened. Okay. So let's think about what resilience is and what it isn't. Uh, first of all, the the process of adapting well. I think the, I think lots of these ideas came up in the chat box. No, George. Yeah, the case of Adversity, trauma, tragedy, significant success. George, would you say that you are um, great at bouncing back? Um, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, as you said, we were suddenly faced with quite a different situation. Um, yeah, I think I've bounced back. Um, it can involve bouncing back, profound personal growth. Do you think you've grown personally over the last eight months, Rachel? I, I, I think so, definitely. I think, okay. obviously. <laughs> what a question, but, George. I think, but... <laughs> I think that a, a very small moment to reflect on that 100%. I think um, most Good. of us, I think, would say, would say we had, no? Roderick, perhaps being culturally sensitive to you, Rachel, has said a bottle of bevy helps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a think about what resilience is. Um, what isn't it, Rachel? Okay, so of course, resilience um, doesn't mean that a person won't be affected um, by distress or, or have difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't uh, something that you either possess or you don't. Okay, so it's not something that you are either born with or without. It can be trained, it can be improved. Okay. Um, and along the same lines, it's not a fixed quantity. You are not this much resilient or not, which is tricky for us who work in assessment. But um, <laughs> yeah, it is something that we can all build on, reflect on, hopefully improve. Absolutely. Okay, uh, so we're going to think about the seven C's of resilience. We know how uh, we love uh, any other words beginning with C, don't we, George? Yeah, we're big fans of C words. So seven C's of re resilience. Any ideas in the chat box? So Cambridge first up, we've got an example there for you while people start having a little think in the chat box and, and, and popping some ideas in there. Oh, nice. Courage, competence, calm. Oh, courage, I like that. Um, Compatibility, coping, creativity, contentment, confidence, cool, nice. Compassion, brave, nearly, uh, <laughs> consistency, acceptance, mm, control, cooperation, critical thinking nice i don't know if that's one of the seven c's of resilience but it is not Rachel. here but it is such it an is. important c in general it um, is a very and, and we could link c. it we could link it in some way there, yeah, there are no right or wrong answers here these are the things that we came up with so first up we had control and um, so providing opportunities which lead to a sense of control that obviously for our students and we are thinking about um our students a little bit here as well we're going to think about us as teachers and building resilience in our learners. And um, of course, if we can offer choices and um, we can let our students make uh, decisions when appropriate and help them to realize that they can take an active role in their emotional health as well as their learning. Next up, George. Competence, which was managed, which was uh, mentioned, uh, helping, our, helping our students feel more competent by helping them identify how they are handling their challenges and already coping. Um, encourage them to ask questions about their learning and take more of an active role, I think, in their learning will help help them with their resilience. Next one, Rachel. Coping, which I think for me is a really important one. I think recognising that we don't all have the same um, strategies to cope with a situation. Um, mm. And I think when we think about our learners, it's about um, respecting, I think, that young person's coping style. And then, where possible, helping them um, to give different um, strategies, I, I suppose, um, different ways to cope. Um, so, of course, it's a healthy way of, of getting through the situation and at the yeah. same time offering ideas for additional or maybe uh, healthier coping strategies there. Nice. Um, confidence, this was mentioned. Um, helping our students build confidence praising them for overcoming obstacles, um, attributing this to something that they have done versus luck or chance, providing opportunities for them to build their confidence uh, step by step, one step at a time, um, but helping them recognize each stage of their success. Um, scaffolding their confidence, I think, uh, might be a quite nice way of putting that. What do you think, Rachel? 
Absolutely. I think that links quite nice as well to connection. Um, so helping our learners to um, express their emotions mm. um, making sure that they feel heard. And of course, that will help strengthen emotional bonds, um, not just with us as teachers. I think if we put those strategies into practice, um, it can be uh, you know, practiced in, in other areas of their lives as well. Character um, helps strengthen and build our students' sense of character, helping them explore who they are, what their values are, um, and you know, what they have to offer. Um, I think you know, sometimes our quieter students who were at least visible face to face might get more easily lost in an online situation. So being aware of trying to maintain a balance between all of our students, uh, making sure they are present or as present as possible in, in online lessons at least. And lastly, Rachel. Lastly, contribution. I think for us to feel um, truly resilient, we need to explore those situations where um, young people can feel truly like they are, you know, contributing and that it's valuable contribution. So mm. ways that we can bring those situations into our students' lives. So we've thought about our students. Let's think a little bit about teacher well-being as well, no, George? Yeah. Um, hopefully a lot of you, you know, well, you have, been, you have been coping, you have been surviving and you will continue to do so. But a few, a few areas we can think about, Rachel? Okay, so making the most of our technical, technological, easy for me to say, and online affordances. Um, so, of course, I think, you know, what we've got here, I think, is really what we've seen from teachers over the last few months, is that this was a huge challenge, but we've really taken that challenge um, on with, you know, all of the, the enthusiasm that, that we could muster, and we've learned mm. so much from it, I think. Um, I think it's really important that we take moments, regular moments, to reflect on that and to think about, you know, what we have learned, what we have developed in our teaching um, skills and strategies over the last few months as well. And of course, that helps to boost our confidence um, and the fact that we now feel more competent um, as online teachers um, hopefully will reduce any stress or worry or concern if we have to do it again in the future. Excellent. Um, if you are still stuck at home or in some kind of lockdown, I think trying, I know this is very difficult to say uh, nowadays when we have news flying in from everywhere, but trying to limit exposure to negative news as much as possible. Again, it's quite difficult when most of the news is quite negative. Really tricky, um, isn't it? Um, it is really tricky. tricky. I think trying to devote a specific part of the day to watching or reading, listening to the news, try and only follow trusted sources, uh, again, that is becoming uh, all the more difficult in this age of disinformation. Uh, but I think, yeah, trying trying to isolate yourself a little bit from from the barrage of negativity um, can definitely help. Definitely, I think we are sharing this link with you in the chat box. And um, there's a whole blog there if you want to go away and read up a little bit more on the things that we're talking about here. And um, finally, that balance is very green, isn't it? I really struggle to read that's that. super green, yeah. Um, balancing our work. I don't know if that's bra brand appropriate green, <laughs> <laughs> Balancing our work and life. So I think uh, this is something that I think is, is really important. If we are still in those online classes, that we make sure that we have that kind of clear divide. Hopefully we can, we can manage that between when our work life kind of comes to an end and when it's time to, to relax and spend time, you know, with, with our family or, or just kind of, you know, chilling out, basically. Yeah. No, I mean, I remember the beginning of lockdown I found very difficult because I was uh, in quite a small flat and it was like my work, my computer was the centre of the flat, so it was tricky. It is, definitely. Um, bringing it a bit more, a bit closer to the classroom, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so thinking about uh, strategies we can use with our learners again. Um, so those shared commitments, um, of course, I'm sure we're all used to doing this. I'm sure this won't come as um, anything new to you all. Kind of establishing those uh, expectations. I think I like the word expectations rather than rules. Um, where learners can share and get involved. Again, coming back to those ideas of, of control and learners taking responsibility. 
thinking about their roles, expectations for themselves, for the others in their class. I think if we are able to agree on those as a group, that will hopefully help us as teachers as we uh, move forward. We're going to share this blog with you as well in the chat box. So this might look something like this. So posing certain questions to our learners. How will I manage social distancing if we are back face to face, for example? Um, how will I let my uh, classmates know that I'm uncomfortable? So just some little ideas there of questions we could ask our students. To get and we to could give questions. them some little language stems and practice some English as well. We can indeed. I expect everyone to. I expect my teacher to. Um, it's a nice little, I mean, but we're, we're, what, a couple of months into the beginning of term now. But I think perhaps refreshing this as, as the situation evolves and changes. Um, and as Rachel was saying, getting, getting the students involved, I think, will um, help. Um, I think establishing a very clear learning plan and goals for everything you're doing, maybe on a monthly, termly, weekly basis. A very strong connection between resilience and reflection on learning. So start each using with goal, each unit with a goal setting task related to unit objectives. Can do statements, which we love in assessment and you know, Cambridge University Press. Um, there are hundreds, thousands of can do statements available for you all, um, either within our teacher's handbooks at each level, or if you go to the CEFR document, it's a really nice way to structure things. And I really like can do rather than can't do. Um, we're focusing on you know, what our students are good at, what they're aiming for. And lastly, Rachel. Linking directly, I think, to Learn to Learn, we're going to share this um, research paper with you as well, if you want to go away later and have a little um, read up more about this. Um, linked to our Cambridge Life Competency Framework, of course, learners reflecting, uh, as George was saying, on his very fa uh, favourite can-do statements. For example, that might look something like this for primary, for secondary, and for higher education. Have you got anything to add in about the can-do statements, George? No, seen. not really. Well, these are really nice sort of general overarching uh, can-do statements, but, you know, there are plenty more to be found. Yeah, and I think, it, again, it would be quite nice to maybe create a couple of can-do statements with the students before as well, no? Think about yeah, the objectives, definitely. what yeah. they want to achieve. And think about what they can do and what they will be able to do, again. So help them design their learning pathway or their learning journey. And I think it's nice to be able to tick things off. Do you like lists, Rachel? I love lists. If you, you can see my I desk know. now, it's covered. Yeah, just covered uh, in, lists. in lists, yeah. Covered. I've moved away from lists. I seem, to, I seem to be spending too much time writing lists rather than actually, <laughs> rather than doing, ticking rather than actually ticking things off. <laughs> um, so emotional well-being, I know a lot of you are now back in the classroom, but continuing to support that emotional well-being um in the classroom what ideas have we had Rachel? yeah so here we've come up with a, a couple of ideas here so thinking as george said um when we are returning and maybe you are already in those classrooms um i think even you know even online i think if you're continuing to teach um from a distance i think this is really important we might not be able to do as much as we want but i think it's probably an important well, definitely an important consideration Mm. Um, for us to think about supporting the emotional well-being of our learners. So we've got a couple of examples here for you. So first up, communicate, of course, another C. Um, so, that did you know, pop up in, in our C brainstorm. Exactly, exactly mm. it did. So open conversations. Um, I think that sometimes there are problems that we can't solve, of course. But just the fact, you know, that we can um, spend that time listening to students, I think, is really um, important. Some other ideas we had. Um, engaging we... with parents. Yeah, yeah should we bring through. up the rest? Yeah, I think we're, we might be running a bit over time. That's true. We carry on at this leisurely pace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> engage with parents where appropriate and where you can. Um, uh, we're aware if you have three or four classes of 30 students, that's a lot of parents to contact, but try and maintain that communication, ask parents how their child's been getting on at home, let, your, let the parents know about what your plans are if you're tra transitioning back, if you're remaining online. Um, differentiating, 
Yeah, yeah I so. think this potentially could be something that students um, and our learners, you know, do feel maybe a little bit concerned and worried about if there are gaps uh, in their learning, if there are things that they perhaps missed out on for whatever mm -hmm. reason um, over the last few months. So, um, of course, you know, trying to, if we can support our learners through differentiation and um, scaffolding, supporting those learners to, to help them to feel that they are not behind. Um, and there are more resources on the Cambridge English website to help you there. And we're gonna share that link a little bit later on. Let's move on then, George, because I know that we are running out of time. So, do you wanna go through the checklist? The teacher's checklist, I think, looking after yourself, being realistic, like we said before, being true to yourself, being realistic and being realistic with your class, uh, keeping in touch, uh, as we said, with your students, uh, with your loved ones, uh, with the parents of your students. Trust. What do we mean by trust, Rachel? Trust who? Trust who? <laughs> you tell trust me. Trust yourself. Then. Trust your students as far as possible. We know that's not always easy. Exactly. Um, and focus on the essentials. I think what I was saying earlier about how we've had to adapt our teaching, especially if we're online, because we know things take a lot longer. You've got to really drill down um, and decide, you know, what the main objectives of what you're doing in each lesson, in each stage of each lesson really are. Definitely. I think we've just popped some examples in there. I think what would be a really nice idea here um, as a teacher, you know, for us is to kind of identify our own maybe three or four areas and just use this just as a little reminder to think, am I, am I taking care of myself? Am I paying attention to my, my own well-being um, all the time? I think we, before we spoke about practicing what we preach, and I think as teachers, we are um, kind of very conscious about uh, resilience and well-being in our learners and sometimes we probably don't spend enough time thinking about ourselves as well. So adapting um, all this has led to a huge change no George? Yeah I mean we say keep calm and carry on but I think the best way to carry on is to keep adapting and as we said at the beginning we have a lot of you are in well we have a, a big stretch a big mm, spread across online face to face half and half um so we've got to keep it out we've got to keep reflecting on what we're doing improving what we're doing um and a lot of what we've learned is everything that is available for, to help us adapt and to help us carry on what we're doing um online so we'll finish off um, at what we need to bear in mind when we're choosing tools to help us in the classroom. Um, so we would say these three areas are pretty key. Um, user experience or UX, um, language learning, pretty, pretty essential, and the technical side of things. Uh, I'll just go into that in a bit more detail. Rachel. Yeah, so uh, user experience, I think this is a really um, important one for learners. I myself have found kind of a few great platforms that I've ended up using with my colleagues. Are they right for my learners in the classroom? Probably not. So um, is it aesthetically pleasing? If I'm teaching primary, if I'm teaching secondary, obviously there's going to be a little bit of variety and, and difference there as well. Language learning, um, so language practice, um, does it allow and what skills does it allow for um, learners to practice? How much control do the students have over their pace of learning there? Um, and how helpful is the project for teaching large classes? So there's quite a big variety of teachers teaching, um, you know, maybe 10 students in the class, up to 30, 35. Um, yeah, so more. definitely a big consideration there. Um, tracking learning, um, I think this from little ones all the way up, um, obviously depending, but can users set their own goals? Are there opportunities for self-assessment? Do you get instant feedback? You know, that's one thing that moving online has helped enormously is the, ins the, the instantaneity, is that even a word? <laughs> the instantaneous aspect of a lot of the resources that we're using. Um, and you can send students off uh, for, you know, further self-assessment opportunities. Can you as teachers observe their strengths and weaknesses? Um, and I think just quickly before, I think what's uh, one thing to really bear in mind is a healthy balance of this, because uh, there are quite a lot of very aesthetically pleasing products, which when you actually drill down, aren't necessarily doing what you think they're doing. Definitely. Um, 
next so bullet all point. Of these, yeah, all of these little um, kind of considerations here, obviously, if you think about it, they directly link back to the things that we're trying to, the tools that we're using to help build resilient learners. So social interaction, building those connections, and yeah. helping us, uh, well, helping the students to communicate, feel heard, feel listened to, um, <laughs> to what opportunities are there for collaboration. I think, to be honest, I think a lot of teachers have been telling us, George, you know, that um, the opportunities for collaborative work online, yeah. teachers have, have now started to get a yeah, little yeah, bit more yeah. comfortable with it. Using things like mm -hmm. Padlet, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I think it makes a lot of it much easier. Um, and quicker. Um, learning through language, what opportunities are there for developing intercultural skills online? Um, how can our students use language to build knowledge in other subjects? And critical thinking, which was mentioned earlier. It was indeed. Um, are, are there opportunities for them to develop their critical thinking skills? On the technical side, it's always got to be borne in mind what devices you need, what kind of internet connection do you need? How does the product company use your data, especially with our younger learners? You've got to be very Amazing. careful, yeah. making sure parents are aware of what you are using, make sure that they're happy with that. Um, and what user support does the product provide when things um, do go wrong, if they do go wrong? How much support is there going to be? Is your lesson just going to fall to pieces? Um, you can find out more um, on, on our website and the Cambridge University Press website. Um, yep, we're going to the, share these links with you now. I think our colleagues are sharing these links with you yep, in the chat box. Pop up in the chat box. As we speak. Um, resources for teachers. Um, we have a great new section on our website called Your New English Classroom. Yeah. Uh, a good. lot of material that was... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. That's <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, YouTube. YouTube, so you can see lots more webinars. Um, there it is. I see a lot of familiar <laughs> names. Uh, it's good to see you again. Your New English Classroom, a lot of material was created over the summer, and I think this went live at the beginning of September, with well bearing the various situations in mind so teaching face to face online teaching in a socially distanced classroom um opportunities for teaching in hybrid classrooms as well please check it out there's lots of stuff on there ready to go lesson plans um the lesson plans visit okay. yeah lesson plans are always nice um, and we've mentioned the blog uh, a few times, actually, we've shared a few of these links with you already today. Um, I do recommend this. Go along with some great ideas, some great insights, um, activities, uh, ideas to use to, to go away and to implement in your classrooms um, tomorrow. And um, supporting every teacher. I think we mentioned that one earlier, didn't we, George? Uh, I don't know, Paul. I think this is your, this is the Cambridge University Press website. That's Slightly true, different. exactly. So that links to, um, I think Jenny will be sharing that um, link in the chat box go. for it's you as well. Up. As we said, tools and resources, um, if you are teaching Some from home. But really nice people. blogs on there, which are constantly yeah. being updated. Um, so yeah, check them out. So let's have a little quick recap. Um, so first up, we thought about what really matters um, in terms of um, our online classes. Again, if we're teaching hybrid, if we're teaching face-to-face, -face, thinking about what is valuable, what um, objectives we want to achieve by the end of the lesson, how much structure it needs. Do we try the new things today? Do we try everything at the same time? Or do we stage things out? We don't want to take uh, you know, too much, put too much on our plate um, immediately. I think we can take our time with these things. And of course, what we've learned and taking those moments to reflect and thinking about what we have learned so far. So today's takeaway, George. So this is, well, it is still new. It is still changing this whole situation. It depends where you are in the world, depending on how, how new it is. I think it's uh, constantly but it is new, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I have no idea what's going on really. Um, it's not normal. And it's, it's not the new normal. I really hate that expression. Yeah. Um, it's not normal, so don't worry if it doesn't feel like it's normal. Uh, but you are all still teachers, teaching students. Next one. <laughs> Who yeah. are people first, both you and the students. Rachel? Exactly. So thinking about this, um, you know, stick to, I think it's great. We've, we've, 
adapted. We've learned so much over the past few months. I think now we're probably all at the point where we know what we're comfortable with. We know the, the things that we have confidence um, in using. Um, and I think, again, at the beginning, I mentioned how this whole situation, the whole situation of the past year, I think really has, for me, definitely, I'm sure George will agree here, as will the rest of my team, it really has proven how truly resilient teachers are um, in your ability to really, really um, adapt to this new situation. And it's been wonderful. I mean, the thing that I think George and I have enjoyed in particular over the last few months is building these connections with teachers like we are this morning, yeah. this afternoon, this evening with all of you, hearing your ideas, hearing your success stories, finding out the things that you are having and, um, you know, maybe a few concerns about and working together as a team to, to get through it. And that uh, is where we come to the end of our talk. And Jenny, I think we've got a little bit of time for questions. Hello, yes, thank you for that talk. You covered such a lot in just 30 minutes. Lots of really good value there for teachers, I'm sure. Um, yes, if we've got time for questions, I think we've got about 10 minutes for questions. So um, feel free to have a look at the Q&A. And I'm also going to pick out a few that I think um, would be good to answer. Um, I sharing my screen because then I can actually see the Q&A box if that's okay. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, you can certainly do that. Absolutely. I've got an interesting one here. Um, uh, let's see, do you know any resources for students in particular online about resilience, for example, when they're learning online? Um, this is from Joanna, any groups or social media or anything like that, you know, what, what, is there any way that students can actually help themselves? I mean, I, th I think that links to everything that we were talking about in terms of the tactics and the structures that we give our students. I think um, it's, it's what we, maybe what we didn't talk about this morning is um, that reflection stage for students to help them to realize that all of those routines that they're putting into place self-reflection, self-assessment, all of these things, students actually need to take a, take a moment to actually think about um, how they have improved and the resilience that they have potentially gained from that, if that makes sense. I don't know if you want to mm. answer within there, George. No, I agree, I think. And we've spoken a lot in lots of sessions recently about um, taking advantage of the situation to try and make peer assessment and self-assessment a much more regular part of our class, which I think is in some ways a lot easier online. And I think making that much more routine and keeping a record of it will help um, help show the students the pro progress that they are making, uh, think, which yeah. hopefully will help with their resilience and their positivity. I think that the, the, uh, the learning to learn uh, research paper that we shared as well would be a really good thing to go away. And mm and and have a look at there because what we need to do obviously with the students is help them to realize how those you know those structures they are learning to learn there so i, I would say uh, definitely go away and, and take a look at that as well yeah yeah lovely okay another question that i just thought would be interesting what tips would you give to freelance teachers who don't have a support network of colleagues i mean obviously that's quite isolating isn't it more so than even people who are in the school so so wondered if you've got any tips there. Come to our webinars? No, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> anything beyond that, Rachel? I mean, I, I mean, know there are quite a few community areas of teachers on our website and on the supporting every teacher. Uh, I think there are areas where teachers can share their advice and support. Definitely. And I think, I mean, just if you take a look, I think, at, at, at you know, loads of social media pages now, there are these kind of network of teacher groups just popping up all over the place. So I would say find one, find one that works for you. Um, and then, you know, if, if the group is too big, I think I think use the resources you have to, to create potentially your own little network as well. I think it's just about reaching out and making those connections, making sure that you don't feel isolated in that way. Um, and I think, you know, the affordances of social media allows us to do that really well these days. Mm -hmm. Great question. 
Okay, I've just had one through from Facebook, if we've got time, um, saying what kind of language activity can help to develop resilience among learners online? So the link is, is there a language? Is there a link there? The, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the link, one of the links that we shared um, earlier in the webinar has got some actual activity type ideas um, to go away and use for students there as well. So I would say go away and, and, and check that um, blog out for sure. Yeah, and your new English classroom. Um, as I said, all of, the, all of that material was created in the middle of the situation, bearing it very much in mind. So I would check out your new English classroom for that. Yeah. Okay, been a couple of teachers separately have um, asked about tips. It's not strictly about resilience, but you know, it's part of the ongoing situation tips on teams not wanting to turn on their cameras. It's a question of shyness, I suppose, you know, which is part of well being and resilience and community. Rachel, any it, ideas there? It's, I mean, it's, I, this is why I love. Um, having moments for question and, and answer session because all of these things come in and they're things that, you know, I suppose these small instances are situations that are, a lot of teachers are facing. And um, yeah, I mean, we shouldn't obviously put students in situations where they don't feel completely comfortable. So I would say take it step by step. I think if we can encourage teenagers maybe to turn on their computer, uh, computers, turn on their cameras when they're going to move to breakout rooms to begin with. Mm -hmm. I think a step with their peers step, rather than in front of the whole class, perhaps. Exactly. And, and I think it's something that we can probably all definitely relate and empathize with. So I think it's about sharing that with the students as well. Maybe, the, you know, as a teacher, we can have some classes where we agree it's a no mm. camera day. I don't know. Mm. It, it's really tricky because then, you know, there's, I suppose, all the expectations of the school as well. You know, are they expecting students to have their cameras on or off? But I would say open communication, I think, with all of the learners mm. there, making sure that they are comfortable with the things that we are expecting um, from them. And if we can somehow hopefully meet them in the middle, maybe. Yeah, and I think get, getting them used to it. I mean, I find it hard to believe that... Uh, lots of teenagers aren't used to being on camera um, in today's day and age. Uh, I think resources like Flipgrid, um, which we've heard lots of great stuff from teachers about using Flipgrid, obviously staging it, start or small and build up. But once you're used to seeing yourself on camera, the first time it's always horrible and your voice never sounds how you think it does. But once they become more used to it and it becomes a more a more routine part of the class hopefully that will help i think scaffolding it supporting building up from little to more um yeah things like flipgrid whatsapp i don't know it depends on the nature of your class and the size of your class i suppose yeah definitely yeah good stuff okay uh, we've got two more minutes we might answer one more question possibly two if we're quick um hello fellow educators um do you have samples of templates or do you know where we can find them i suppose of self-reflections for students and for teachers or could we just make them i suppose that's one option isn't it yeah jenny go for it <laughs> I'll, I'll go um, away and start creating i'm sure someone somewhere has got some we, i don't have anything ready to go i've, I've given a few sessions recently with my colleague Victoria on um, on speaking and writing assessment uh, where we've taken the taken taken assessment criteria and rewritten it for students so this is obviously with more of an academic focus but I think getting students to write their own can-do statements or helping them um, I think this really helps feed into peer assessment and then self-assessment. Um, you can download those, I think, from YouTube from some of our sessions, but turning assessment criteria into success criteria. And as I said, if it's A2, have a look at the examiner criteria, write it down to level. Um, have I done this? Have I done this? Um, the traffic light system is really nice for younger learners. Every time they submit a piece of work, um, they can take that opportunity to reflect on how they've done, how comfortable they feel with it, um, from red, uh, from green up to red. Anything else, Rachel? Definitely. No, I was thinking the same thing, and I was thinking about um, if you're in. I mean, of course, this could be adapted to which whatever situation you're in, but 
online, you know, kind of spending a few moments on those objectives, which I always find that if you ask students to look at the unit objectives or the lesson objectives, they'll read them, they won't really pay much attention. Mm -hmm. If we ask the students then to go away and perhaps via a Padlet or something like that, mm -hmm. where the students can kind of use a sticky note um, kind of system to write down ideas, get them to think of two or three personal um, reflection activities or yeah. can-do statements, as George was saying, and then just having those regular moments where they are reflecting on their own mm. personalised objective for that lesson. It was the Shout Out Friday. Do you, do you remember Shout that, Rachel? Friday, yeah. yeah, you can build a sort of, you know, a, a, a positive, a, a good things we've done this week, things we wish we could have done better, maybe on a Padlet, and then every Friday, dedicate some time to go over, you know, what, what, what has gone well, what hasn't gone well. Um, everybody has, you know, 30 seconds or a minute to to shout out what they've been proud of this week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. OK, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. We've literally okay. hit um, the end of the webinar. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you've enjoyed it. I can see lots of positive comments there in the chat. So that's really good to see all that. Um, look out for the recording on YouTube next week and do enjoy um, the rest of the sessions on Global Schools Festival. Thank okay, you all bye -bye. very much. And thank you yes. again, Rachel and George. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you all. for coming. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.